Hello everyone, and today I'm covering the second round I played in the Newport uh, Major Congress. Uh, so if you hadn't didn't watch the first video, uh, there's basically the Newport Congress, which is a place. Newport is a place in Wales, which is like in the east of southeastern of Wales. And uh, there were three sections in this tournament. So there was the open, which anyone could play, major under 1900 fee day or equivalent, and then un uh, the minor was under 1650 uh, fee day or equivalent. So in this game, I played as black. I would won. I won the first round. So I'm on one out of one. And uh, I started. Um, I started with the Karakhan against my opponent today, and then. Uh, I was, I was expecting the advanced variation because uh, my opponent he he's n he plays the he's known to play lots of different openings so he plays uh, d4 e4 knight to f3 and uh, c4 as well so he plays lots of different openings so I wasn't sure what to expect so I just uh, just chill basically and we got into this Tartakawa structure where I could potentially start attacking against Black's king a uh, white king. So my pun and d4 and bishop e6, bishop d6. Now uh, uh, he went bishop e3. So the idea here, obviously, is that he's gonna go queen d2 and long castle at some point. Uh, and that's what I thought, and it, that's what happened. Now here I did play the move rook to e8. Um, although I think I sh could have brought the bishop out to f5. The problem with bishop f5 was, um, and I'll check with the engine as well. I think bishop f5 was like probably the best human move. I was worried about knight to h4 and I thought I'd have to go back to g6 and like play like this. And I thought black would get an attack. Oh, uh, white would get an attack, sorry. Uh, but here apparently you can just go back and then you can bring the knight to a6 to c7. Knight to a6, c7 into uh, d5. I don't know if that always happens, but I mean, or you can just bring the knight to d7, rook e8, knight to, f knight to f8, which is the usual maneuver. Uh, but I went rook e8, and then um, my opponent went bishop d3. Now I played the move knight e7. Um, so, just a normal, typical maneuver. If I go bishop g4, um, just thought long castle, bishop takes f3, g takes f3. I pruned his pawn structure, but he has the two bishops pointing directly at my king. He has an open g file, which he can use against my king. And he just starts absolutely. It just just doesn't look good. Can push f4 and f5. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure what the engine says about this, but exactly, it's it's not a good position for for me. After bishop f3, g f3. I mean, apparently he had this bishop b6, but I mean that's kind of what happened in the game. So knight d7, long castle. Now I played knight to f8, and my opponent went h3. Now I played move bishop to e6. So bishop to e6 is attacking this pawn. Now c4 was played, so. Here I spent a lot of time, so after c4 was played, um, before c4 was played I was on like 75 minutes. Here after the move c4, which was, and my opponent spent 7 minutes overall in the whole game, so he's quite a quick player. And um, here I spent 10 minutes because uh, I was contemplating between uh, queen d7, queen c7, and um, what was the other move? I think rook b8 or rook c8 or something like this so in the end uh so i was worried about if queen d7 there might be some g4 idea and we will confirm that with the engine and apparently this is okay for black but i mean yeah yeah because you can bring the knight to g6 go h6 and knight to f4 but realistically i just didn't uh like the fact that all of my pieces just felt a bit like cramped and everything i mean my pieces did get more cramped but here uh, i have White hasn't made any positional concessions as such, except for the f4 square, but that's where White's playing, so. Uh, I went queen c7 here, which I don't think was necessarily the best move, but I felt like it was. Now c5 was played, so c5 really weakens this d5 square, so bishop e7 of course. And then bishop f4 was played, and then here I went queen d7. So the idea to trade off this bishop, and uh... Um, my idea was to somehow, if I can get this knight to d5, I'll have a stronger knight compared to his. And here I was also looking at how uh, white's knight can get into d6. I was looking at it from move 14. He did manage to get the knight to d6 in like move 30 something, so. If I'm, check if I'm reading it correctly, but yeah, we'll see. 
So you want bishop to b1, which is a really weird move, I think. Bishop f5, rook h to e1, bishop b1, king g1, uh, king b1, knight g6, so attacking this bishop, attacking this knight. So here I was de definitely worried about the knight getting to d6. So I'm thinking, how can the knight get to d6? Knight d2, knight, uh, knight. Uh, knight g5, knight to e4, knight, uh, knight to d6. Well, he can't do that because the um, uh, the pawn is the pawn on f6 is standing there. Sorry, uh, but knight d2, knight to e4, knight d6, or like knight c, knight c4, knight d6. Can he do that? Yes, he can, because there's nothing obstructing that. If I do push f5 at any point, white can go bishop e5 and they can safely claim an adv advantage there. Because if I do push g6 there. Um, like, if I push something like f5 here, it might be bishop to e f5, bishop to e5. And if I play g6 to try and, like, have this nice pawn structure, all of a sudden, white has queen h6, and then the dark, the weaknesses on the dark squares just become evident, and it's going to be better for white then. So I go knight g6 here, so my idea is bring the bishop to f8, put the knight to e7, put the knight to d5, uh, at some point, play g6 and bishop g7. So this was the line I was calculating. Uh, so after bishop g3, I calculated bishop f8, something like queen c2, so that he can get the knight to e7, which makes sense. Knight to e7. So I thought he would play knight d2, knight d5, uh, maybe I don't know, um, knight to e4. Now I'd play g6, and if he went bishop d6 with the idea of takes knight takes d6, and he has a better minor piece, I was not going to play that. And instead, I'd play bishop g7 there, and I could push f5, kick out uh, his piece, and then I kick out his knight, and then he's just got a weird bishop standing there. Which looks like it's good, but it doesn't do much in the actual position. And if he did go back to g3, I would have honestly just repeated the position. Um, but he, if, and if he'd gone knight d6, I would take on d6. And I'd say, okay, this bishop, again, isn't doing anything. This knight's very, very strong sitting in the middle of the board controlling these two pawns and it's controlling a lot of key squares but my opponent went uh, when i went knight e7 my opponent went bishop d6 there and uh, if i check now uh, i my opponent has 73 minutes on his clock and when i play knight d5 i have 34 minutes on my clock so i'm already dropping down on time here bishop takes f8 and here i was just quickly thinking should I should I trade the rooks or not uh, the engine does say I should trade off the rooks and the engine in fact says I do have quite a kind of advantage which is very surprising for me to hear because uh, I wasn't thinking about it. in fact I thought I was just clinging on to equality almost uh, I went rook takes f8 though which isn't uh, any worse uh, knight d2 and then I played the move knight b4 here and I thought when, once the queen moves, queen f5, and surely isn't this winning? And I thought, oh, he has knight to e4. Can I go rook to e8? So I thought the line which he, uh, my opponent calculated was queen c4, queen f5, knight to e4, rook e8. I thought he, he was calculating the end game with uh, king a1. And I'd go queen e7, and it's about equal, I would say. Uh, I know, I mean, apparently here there's like g6, but I mean don't really understand why you would give up the pawn. No, no, okay. Uh, I, gu I guess it makes sense. You get some checks on this king and everything. But like, yeah, this ending would, would be a... I, I, I evaluated as about equal after queen e7. And I saw d5, she takes d5, rook takes d5, and rook d8, yeah. And I just thought equal ending should be good. But my opponent went for the move f3, and uh, I thought white's already better here. Um, I actually put this in my evaluation, uh, and then I here I went knight to d5, I'm on 17 minutes now, I'm really struggling on, in terms of time. He went king a1, and I'm really, really, really panicking because the knight gets to d6, and I'm thinking this is a devastating threat. So now, I play this really, really crafty move, queen to e6, and it's apparently the best move, which is really crazy. Uh, and the reason I play this move is I'm threatening the move um, f5 uh, because if he moves the knight away, he's not defending this rook. I can go queen takes e1, queen takes e1, rook takes e1 check, and uh, that would be a checkmate. Uh, so that was my idea. And I was thinking uh, if he moves the queen to f1, that would be a blunder because of the move knight b4. 
uh, and I'm threatening to move knight c2 and queen takes a2, uh, queen takes a2 checkmate, so he'd have to play something like b3 and then I have knight c2 check. I also check this with, um, who, oh yeah, also with queen c2. I saw a uh, knight b4 here, I didn't see queen a4, and, oh no, sorry, yeah, f5 there. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, no, I saw, yeah, this was the line I saw around, but yeah. Yeah, this was the line I looked at, and I just thought, and this has got to be better for white, uh, for black. And it is, so, my opponent went rookie 2 though, which is another really good move. Because now this is all defended. Now I went for the move knight to f4. And the crazy thing is, I'm down to, uh, let me see, 5 minutes here. My opponent has, uh, 50 minutes on the clock. So, something I really need to learn from this tournament is, uh, using my time better. E3, and I played B5 with two and a half minutes on my clock, and I did offer a draw here. I just wanted to see if he would accept it. This is an equal end game, but of course I'm definitely struggling with my time. And now I played him with Rook, Rook A2, E7, and this looks like a totally natural move. And you have to take into account I was in low time. Here there's actually the winning move. Knight takes B5, and after C takes B5, there's move D5. Because if the rook moves like somewhere, then he's moved d6, c6, c7, and these two pass pawns win white the game. So after the move d5, I'd have to give up the knight, play rook takes d5, and apparently this is a winning end game for white. But it just like it really doesn't make sense how it how this works. So I don't think this is a he practical human move to find. So my opponent and knight to f5, which makes a lot more sense. And I have rook d7, and I think there's d5 again. Yes. There is d5 here again, somehow, for some reason. Apparently this is... Oh, okay, yeah. No, this line, yeah. So he manages to take on c6. Apparently here, even taking on... Uh, even if he's... Even if I'm down the exchange here, apparently this is um, okay for me. Uh, because I can, like, bring the king to e7, rook to e7, and I can just make a fortress and into a draw. Uh, so here I played g6, and uh, here I'm on... I've got one and a half minutes on my clock, so I'm very, really, really, really struggling. Uh, knight d6 is played, now I played the move knight d5, and after king a2, I played the move rook d7, and it's just a completely equal endgame at this point, I played the move g3 is a bit of a, let's find it, inaccurate move, which one was that, 6, yes, g3 is a bit of an inaccurate move, because it kind of weakens this pawn, and it's probably like a bit better for me now, but obviously I'm in low time, I do play this move, and I just trade off into a knight ending, and apparently this is winning for white, uh, but my opponent told me after the game that he evaluated this as equal. I, <clears throat> sorry, and I think I evaluated this as equal as well. So after king b3, I played the move king to f8. Here, here the problem is with the move king to f8, I can't bring the king to e7 because knight's here and then knight takes a7. And then he'd also be threatening to take these pawns and everything. It's a mess. So, um, uh, so here I also did check king a5 and then knight c2, king a5 takes, and by the way, just, just take into account I had like one minute on the clock here as well, <clears throat> I just thought this win ending lo ending looked like at least equal or winning for me, so I was okay with this, um, but my opponent went king c3 and then I played the move knight d5, king d3 and I played f5, now h5 was played, and h5 actually turned out to be my opponent's downfall. <laughs> Uh, oh, and did I say, um, uh, when I played knight d5 check, I had 10 seconds on my clock. Obviously, there is an extra 30 seconds, but in these, like, really high-stake classical tournaments, when if you have, like, 10 seconds on your clock or anything, it's going to be very difficult. So, king d3 was played, and then I played f5 with 4 seconds left on my clock, so I have to play very quickly here. Now, um, my opponent played h5. He has, he has almost 40 minutes on the clock now. I play a6 with 9 seconds on my clock, I think it's still about equal, maybe it's, yeah, slightly better for me, Pro probably equal according to table base if it ever expands enough to get at least like 20 piece endings. And then uh, knight c8 was played and I took on h5 with 3 seconds on the clock. And uh, apparently this is the best move, so I <laughs> don't know how I found it, but I'm very happy with it. I just thought um, these look like two pass pawns and I, and I just saw this idea instantly. So that's my bullet tactics, I guess. <laughs> my opponent plays the move knight to a7. And he has 35 minutes on the clock. And it's losing for him. And I play f4 with 5 seconds on my clock. 
and this is a winning end game for me because I get a past h1. G takes uh, f4 is played, and I played the move h4. He cannot stop this pawn from queening, and he's he was he had like at least 70 times more time than I did. You don't understand how confused I got. We got into this position. I did allow him to take the knight, which probably isn't the best thing to do, but I mean. Um, so he played c6 here, I just played queen e6, king e5, king e7 with the idea to just bring the king to, back to c8. Remember, this is still, uh, might be a bit scary because, um, sorry, um, because I, I still don't have much time on my clock. So here I played f6, and my opponent went knight d7, and I sacrificed the queen! Let's find the, yes, brilliant move, because I found that the king ending, uh, just has me promote these these fast pawns so despite being two pawns down in this position i just I promote to a queen and uh, in case you're wondering I, I i did i did check that um a4 h3 um what was it sorry a5 h2 a6 h1 queen h7 i know it looks like he's getting there but then this queen takes f3 and this is absolutely lost for uh for white so this was an exhilarating game and i do not know how i managed to play from move uh, 31, I w had two minutes on the clock, and I managed to win on move 58, and I was around that time, uh, uh, around that clock time for most of the, from like from that point onwards. So it's actually amazing how I managed to keep that game. So um, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.